All right, hello everybody, Chris from Practical Navigator here. I'm not able to do the live stream tonight, so I just wanted to include this video on basic stability uh, to occupy the time. I'll be back at it next week with the live stream. All right, so consider two vessels, one of which is floating upright in water and one of which is inclined, maybe due to a wave or some other reason. There's a couple of key points that we need to know on these vessels regarding um, basic stability. And the first one of those is uh, the concept of the center of gravity. The center of gravity, and it's always labeled G in our uh, stability diagrams. The center of gravity is the center of the average weight on the vessel. So all of the weight, the tanks, the water, the cargo, where it all averages out is the center of gravity. And it always acts straight downward. It doesn't really move unless you do something to your ship, right? So if you change the fuel configuration, if you suck down some water, if you uh, add cargo or remove cargo, the center of gravity is going to change, right? But that's the first point on a vessel. It's the, the average of all the weight. The second point that's important is uh, a different one. It's called the center of buoyancy, or B, the center of buoyancy. The center of buoyancy is the geometric center of the underwater body. So if you take the ship and you add up all the underwater body, the center of buoyancy acts upwards from that point. So it's the geometric center of the underwater body. And B does change pretty much uh, all the time when a vessel is moving, right? So if you think about this vessel here, it's floating upright because the, the downward force of gravity and the upward force of buoyancy even each other out. They average out and the vessel floats upright. <clears throat> if the vessel were to be inclined due to a wave or some other reason, the center of gravity and the center of buoyancy are gonna interact differently, right? So the first one, the center of gravity, is it gonna change if the, uh, if the vessel rolls a little bit because of a wave? Well, not really. It's always gonna act downward. It's gonna be the average of all the weight on the vessel. So unless something crazy has happened because um, the, the vessel was loaded differently or something broke loose, the center of gravity is going to really stay the same, right? So it doesn't really move. The center of buoyancy, though, is going to move. All of this area underwater, the shape has changed. And so now maybe the average center of buoyancy is there, right? So the center of buoyancy has shifted because the geometric shape of the underwater body has also shifted, right? So the center of gravity in this vessel and the center of buoyancy in this vessel act equal and opposite. Well, in this case, they're not um, opposite to each other, right? And that's actually what causes the vessel to right itself, right? It causes this side of the vessel to want to go up and this side of the vessel to want to go down and the vessel is going to return to a righted position. So the, the distance here between the line for the center of gravity and the line for the center of buoyancy is called the uh, writing arm. The writing arm or the writing moment. And that distance there, its, it's letter is GZ, GZ. The wider that gets, the wider it gets, the, uh, the more the vessel wants to write itself. So if this vessel tilted over even further, the center of buoyancy might move over further and cause the vessel to right itself, right? It comes, uh, there comes a point of diminishing returns though. At some point, the vessel is gonna roll over. We don't really need to talk about that for, for our purposes. Our goal is for uh, Coast Guard stability questions, right? So we actually don't need a huge understanding of theoretical stability in order to answer our questions because they're all very formulaic. But knowing where the center of gravity, where the center of buoyancy are is uh, gonna be important as we move forward. There's another point that is uh, located on the vessel and in this case if you label this K that's the keel of a vessel right and so sometimes you might see something called KG. KG that's just a way to measure where the center of gravity is compared to the keel. So KG is just a measure of the uh, center of gravity. If it gets big the center of gravity is high on the vessel and if KG gets small the center of gravity gets uh, lower on the vessel. Generally speaking, a lower center of gravity is good for stability and a higher center of gravity is bad. The last point to talk about is, there's a point way up here called the metacenter. 
the meta center. It's a mathematical point. It's not something that you can go onto a ship and say, there's the meta center, right? But the way that the meta center works, when a vessel is lined up, everything is in a line, it's all good. But if you tilt that vessel over and you take the line from KG up, and then you take a vertical line from B, where that intersects the original line is the meta center. So the meta center is a way for you to understand um, kind of orientating the center of gravity on a ship just like kg but also to understand the writing moment so think about it like this if m stayed the same and the center of gravity moved down in this vessel gz is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger to a certain point right so if your g moved down now your gz is even bigger so the meta center is a way for you to help quantify that but you're going to hear uh, general stability talk about like where is kg if kg is big kg is small likewise you could hear if gm is big or gm is small right and so gm appears in some of our formula that we're going to use so we'll take a look at some of the practice problems that the coast guard could throw your way on an exam um, at the basic stability level all right one of the first types of problems that you could see on a coast guard exam regarding stability um, and we're talking at a level of around 100 to 1600 tons for your license is a uh, roll period problem And this is just a formula that you need to memorize uh, T is equal to 0.44 B over the square root of GM So these variables T is equal to time and that's going to be in seconds Right seconds B is equal to the beam which is in feet and Metacentric height GM is into feet as well Right, so what do these all mean? Well, time, the time it takes for a vessel to roll from one side to the other and back is going to be your roll period. Right? So the roll period is a measure of stability on your vessel. If the vessel's roll period is really long or really short, um, it's not necessarily important how long it is, but if it changes, it's an indicator that something has changed with your stability. So in my world, when I was doing search and rescue cases, if I came across a vessel that I knew a fishing vessel rolled at a certain rate. If all of a sudden it was taking a long, long time to roll back and forth, I knew that vessel was not stable and I wouldn't put my crew aboard. I would try and take the people off the vessel. So something's going on. So this is a way to uh, help analyze your stability. Um, and it's also a Coast Guard problem, so you need to know. So time is in seconds. B, the beam is the widest portion of the vessel, the beam of the vessel. And then GM, if you refer back to the diagram of uh, what is G, what is M, GM is just a, a, a height measurement of where the center of gravity really is. So a big GM versus a small GM. You can see that in the equation, where GM is is gonna make things change. And GM is directly related to time. So if this changes, this changes. So that's why it's a good indicator of stability. So uh, I know I'm moving fairly quickly through these problems. I just wanted to kind of get something that's gonna help you on your exams. So we'll only do one practice problem here. But let's say that you're beam of your vessel is 50 feet, it's nice and wide, and you experience a rolling period of 22 seconds. What is the, the metacentric height of the vessel? Right, so that would be a way to calculate it. And so what you're gonna wanna do is just substitute in everything that you can. So the time is 22 seconds, and that equals 0 0.44 times the beam, or 50, over the square root of GM. Don't be frightened by the square roots, it's just a thing you gotta type into the calculator, right? So if you then kind of proceed through this and do some rearranging of everything, you're gonna see that uh, these are all kind of related, right? So um, 22 is gonna be equal to, um, if you type that into the calculator, 22 over the square root of GM. So that's convenient, right? Coast Guard's not trying to trick you too bad in this case. So then finally, if you rearrange things, the square root of GM is gonna be equal to 22 over 22, or one. So one in that case, right? And so uh, what is the square root of one? Well, I chose this problem specifically for that reason. If you take your calculator and you type it in, the square root of one is one. But in essence, all you need to do is take your, uh, your scientific calculator, and you can, uh, you can notice that there is a, a square root function on it right in here. So if you know how to use your calculator, then you'll be able to solve these kinds of problems um, in no time. 
right? So sometimes the variables, variables will change, the time might be different, the beam might be different, the GM might be given instead of asked for, but this is the formula you need to memorize, so you just kind of plug and chug the numbers into it to get whatever they're looking for. So this is something you could see on your exams uh, in terms of roll period problems for stability. All right, another type of uh, stability problem you could see on your exam on a range from 100 to 1600 tons is gonna be a weight shift problem. A weight shift problem. So again, this is just a formula that you need to memorize. A shift in, in uh, GM or metacentric height is gonna be equal to the weight times the distance that it's shifted divided by the displacement of the vessel. So in essence, they're setting up a ratio. If your vessel is really, really heavy, displacement, a weight shift is not gonna have a very big impact. If the vessel is very light, if the displacement is low, and you move a heavy weight, it's gonna have a bigger impact on the GM. So the shift is gonna be in feet, the weight is gonna be in tons, the distance is gonna be in feet, and the displacement is gonna be in tons. Right, so it's all gonna be in terms of either feet or tons. So in this example problem, your vessel is 640 tons, um, in size, and you've got 16 tons of fish aboard it. If you move that fish down eight feet from the deck to the fish hold, for instance, what is the shift in the center of gravity? So is the sh shift in the center of gravity gonna be positive or negative? Uh, what's, the, what's the magnitude of it? Well, if you're moving a weight down in the vessel, the, the center of gravity is gonna move down and GM's gonna get bigger. But um, what we need to do is just kind of plug in what we know and what we don't know. So the weight here is 16 tons, right? And you're multiplying that by the distance that it moved. So it moved eight feet down. Doesn't even really matter the, the sign in this case. And you divide that by the displacement of the vessel, which is 640 tons. So if you take your uh, calculator and you type all that stuff in, you should end up with a shift of 0.2 feet, right? So the center of gravity moved down uh, 0.2 feet. So you just take the 16 times the eight, divide it by 640, and you get the 0.2. So weight shift problems, it's just a formula to memorize. The shift is equal to the weight times the distance that it went, divided by the displacement of the vessel. So you'll see some examples, um, some examples of this on your, on your test as well. Alrighty, another type of problem that you could see on your stability exam in deck safety is your load center of gravity calculations. All right, so um, in this case, the, the Coast Guard is asking you to determine the center of gravity of a deck load. So say your vessel is out there, you know, and you've got some cargo space. You load up a bunch of stuff on deck, and I want to know the center of gravity of all that stuff. Not the center of gravity of the ship itself, but the center of gravity of the stuff. The reason being, you could probably enter that center of gravity of your load into a, a stability software such as flooding casualty control software, FCCS, or some other system to help calculate this, the center of gravity of the vessel. But this is the task that they want us to complete. And uh, there's no formula for this, but there's a recommended way of organizing your information. So in this case, the vessel here was, is loading 12 tons of water, and they're in pallets that are eight feet high. So a pallet of water, eight feet high, um, is loaded on the deck. There's 12 tons of that. Then they also load 10 tons of food, a bunch of food, and it tells you that the center of gravity of the food is 18 inches above the deck. So maybe it's in a box or something, and the center of gravity is 18 inches above the deck. That's good information for them to give you. I'll show you why they do that in just a second. So if you wanna calculate the center of gravity of all of this stuff, or even more, if there's like anchor chain and information in there, uh, you can do that with this recommended uh, formula. So for the water, organize your information. What is the weight of that water? Well, it's 12 tons. And I guess I should say all weights are in tons. Uh, you're always gonna need to be in tons. What is the center of gravity of that water? Well, if they're in pallets that are eight feet high, right, the center of gravity is in the middle. So it's four feet. And all centers of gravity need to be in feet if you want to stay consistent. Right? So the pallets are eight feet high, therefore the center of gravity is four feet high. 
So the last thing over here is called moment. Moment is a physics term that it's measured, it's like force, newtons or foot tons. And that's the, the case we're gonna use here, foot tons. So if you wanna get the moment of this load, the writing moment in essence, you take the feet, you multiply it by the tons and you get your answer there. So 12 times four is 48 foot tons. So that's the moment for the water. You need to do the same thing for the food. So we've got some food. How much food do we have? We've got 10 tons of it. So that's good. And what is the center of gravity of the food load? Well, it tells you that the center of gravity is 18 inches above the deck. We also said that center of gravity always needs to be in feet. So you need to convert 18 inches to feet in this case, which is 1.5 feet. Right? Coast Guard's always trying to trick you, so be careful. So what's the moment of this? You're gonna take the feet times the tons to get the moment. So 1.5 times 10 is 15 foot tons. So we've organized all our information. We're looking for the center of gravity of the load. We've organized it um, thusly, so we have it uh, all ready to go. So then what we do, if we're looking for the total Right? Maybe there was a third thing, there's not in this case, but if we're looking for the total, we're looking for the total center of gravity there. The total center of gravity, that's what we're after. Well, what's the total weight? If you add up the weights, you've got 22 tons. That's the total weight. What's the total moment? What's the total moment? Well, 48 foot tons plus 15 foot tons is 63 foot tons, right? So now we've got the total moment, we've got the total weight. Now we want the total center of gravity. You can't add center of gravity because they're each, they each weigh different things. But if you take the 63 and you divide it by 22, 63 divided by 22 is 2.8 feet. All right, foot tons divided by tons is feet. And, uh, and you're gonna have your answer there. So 2.8 feet. So what we did is we broke down the individual loads by their centers of gravity by their weights, we calculated a moment for each one, then we calculated the total moment, the total tonnage, and divided them to get the total center of gravity. So all of this stuff that you're putting on the deck, its center of gravity is 2.8 feet above the deck. You could enter that into a flooding software, a uh, stability software, to get some information that's useful to you. Um, as it is, this is not super useful, but it is a Coast Guard problem that I wanted to talk about. All right, one other type of uh, problem you can see is a tons per inch immersion problem or a TPI problem. And um, this is just some more formulas you gotta memorize. Uh, but in essence, what we're saying there is if your vessel is floating in the water somewhere at some level, how many tons of weight do you have to add to it to get it to sink by another inch, right? So you'd think that uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. If you add a bunch of weight onto a vessel, it's gonna sink. Uh, but we want to quantify that. How much weight do you need to add to get it to sink by exactly one inch? Right, so one inch. So there's two formulas to know. The, uh, the water plane formula, the water plane is equal to the length times the beam times some coefficient. And when I say coefficient, that's just a number that's thrown out there for physics purposes to, uh, to make the math work out. Each vessel is going to have its own um, coefficient, right? And then the other formula, the tons per inch immersion is equal to all of this divided by 420. So sometimes you see it as one formula, sometimes you see it as two, but um, we'll go with that. So here's the information in the problem. You're on a 680 foot freighter and you have a beam of 60 feet. Your vessel's water plane coefficient is 0.84. If you've got a 21 foot draft, how many long tons do you need to add in order to increase the mean draft by one inch? Right? You want to increase the draft by one inch. How many tons of weight do you need to add? Probably not that much, but um, relative to the boat, we'll see. So the first step is going to be to plug in the information that you know. We want this water plane because that's going to go right there. But like I said, you could just throw all that over 420 and call it good. So the length is 680. The beam is 60. And the coefficient is 0.84. So you multiply all those together in your calculator and you end up with a uh, water plane of 3,400 and um, 272, right? So that goes over this, 420, right? That goes in right there. And then you divide 
um, that answer by 420 and you type that into your calculator as well and you end up with a uh, TPI of 81.6 tons right so in essence what they're saying there is if you take 81.6 tons of weight and you add it to this vessel the vessel is going to sink by one inch if you add another 81.6 inches it's going to sink by another inch right so the way that we got there we use this water plane formula length times beam times coefficient and then you divide that by 420 to get the tons per inch immersion or TPI. So these are problems that you see at the you know lower to mid-level license problems but in essence you just take all the information that you're given you throw it into the formulas and you'll get your tons per inch immersion from there. You can't really go direct to TPI unless you choose to uh, write your own formula tons per inch immersion is equal to length times beam time coefficient over 420 or you can break it up into two steps uh, which I like to do just because it helps me keep track of the numbers but up to you whichever way you go. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for tonight. We talked about four different types of stability problems. We did a little intro to stability. There's more to it. We'll cover maybe at a different time. But um, in the Cutterman's Guide to Navigation Problems, which I'll leave a link for in the description below, there's a bunch more practice problems that you can have. Uh, I know I went quickly through this video. This video, if you're watching it later in the future, this is for a few of my students that I have um, that are doing a review of all this stuff. So it's directed to them, but it can help uh, everybody that's studying for your stability uh, exam as well. So we talked about uh, basic stability formulas and um, terms, the, uh, the center of gravity, the center of buoyancy, etc. We talked about roll period problems, tons per inch immersion problems, weight shift problems, and then center of gravity problems. Those are the most common ones you'll see at the uh, 100 to 1600 ton license level. I hope that's helpful. Uh, like I say, if you need any questions, if you have any questions, if you want to talk about anything, just hit me up at chris at practicalnavigator.org. And in the meantime, like I say, if you're watching this in the future, this uh, quick video is meant for some of my particular students that are studying for an exam. Okay, thanks. Good night.